A borough was an autonomous municipal corporation in Scotland and Northern England, usually a town, or tone in Scots. This type of administrative division existed from the 12th century, when King David I created the first royal boroughs. Borough status was broadly analogous to borough status, found in the rest of the United Kingdom. Following local government reorganisation in 1975 the title of Royal Borough remains in use in many towns, but now has little more than ceremonial value. History The first borough was Berwick. By 1130, David I had established other boroughs including Edinburgh, Stirling, Dunfermline, Haddington, Perth, Dumfries, Jedburgh, Montrose and Lanark. Most of the boroughs granted charters in his reign probably already existed as settlements. Charters were copied almost verbatim from those used in England, and early burgesses usually invited English and Flemish settlers. They were able to impose tolls and fines on traders within a region outside their settlements. Most of the early boroughs were on the east coast, and among them were the largest and wealthiest, including Aberdeen, Berwick, Perth and Edinburgh, whose growth was facilitated by trade with other North Sea ports on the continent, in particular in the Low Countries, as well as ports on the Baltic Sea. In the southwest, Glasgow, Ayr and Kirkcudbright were aided by the less profitable sea trade with Ireland and to a lesser extent France and Spain. Boroughs were typically settlements under the protection of a castle and usually had a market place, with a widened high street or junction, marked by a Mercat cross, beside houses for the Burgesses and other inhabitants. The founding of 16 royal boroughs can be traced to the reign of David I 1124 and there is evidence of 55 boroughs by 1296. In addition to the major royal boroughs, the late Middle Ages saw the proliferation of baronial and ecclesiastical boroughs, with 51 created between 1450 and 1516. Most of these were much smaller than their royal counterparts. Excluded from foreign trade, they acted mainly as local markets and centers of craftsmanship. Boroughs were centers of basic crafts, including the manufacture of shoes, clothes, dishes, pots, joinery, bread and ale, which would normally be sold to indwellers and outdwellers on market days. In general, boroughs carried out far more local trading with their hinterlands, on which they relied for food and raw materials, than trading nationally or abroad. Boroughs had rights to representation in the Parliament of Scotland. Under the Acts of Union of 1707 many became parliamentary boroughs, represented in the Parliament of Great Britain. Under the Reform Acts of 1832, 32 years after the merger of the Parliament of Great Britain into the Parliament of the United Kingdom, the boundaries of boroughs for parliamentary elections ceased to be necessarily their boundaries for other purposes. Types. There were several types of borough, including Royal Borough, founded by royal charter Borough of Regality, granted to a nobleman or Lord of Regality Borough of Barony, granted to a tenant-in-chief, with narrower powers Parliamentary Borough or Borough Constituency, a type of parliamentary constituency Police Borough, a borough operating a police system of town government Topic Modern history Until 1833, each borough had a different constitution or set. The government of the borough was often in the hands of a self-nominating corporation, and few local government functions were performed, these were often left to ad hoc bodies. Two pieces of reforming legislation were enacted in 1834, the Royal Boroughs Scotland Act 3 and 4 will. IVC. 76 and the Boroughs and Police Scotland Act 3 and 4 will. IVC.46. The Royal Boroughs Act provided for the election of magistrates and councillors. Each borough was to have a common council consisting of a provost or lord provost, magistrates or baileys and councillors. Every parliamentary elector living within the royalty or area of the royal borough, or within seven statute miles of its boundary, was entitled to vote in borough elections. One third of the common council was elected each year. The councillors selected a number of their members to be baileys, who acted as a magistrate's bench for the borough and dealt with such issues as licensing. The provost, or chief magistrate, was elected from among the council every three years. 
The Royal Boroughs Act was also extended to the twelve parliamentary boroughs which had recently been enfranchised. These were growing industrial centres, and apart from the lack of a charter, they had identical powers and privileges to the royal boroughs. Royal boroughs retained the right to corporate property or common good. This property was used for the advantage of the inhabitants of the borough, funding such facilities as public parks, museums and civic events. The Boroughs and Police Act allowed the inhabitants of royal boroughs, boroughs of regality and of barony to adopt a police system. Police in this sense did not refer to law enforcement, but to various local government activities summarized in the Act as paving, lighting, cleansing, watching, supplying with water, and improving such boroughs respectively, as may be necessary and expedient. The Act could be adopted following its approval in a poll of householders in the borough. Boroughs reformed or created under this and later legislation became known as police boroughs. The governing body of a police borough were the police commissioners. The commissioners were elected by the existing town council of the borough, not by the electorate at large. The town council of a borough could by a three-quarters majority become police commissioners for the borough. In many cases this led to the existence of two parallel borough administrations, the town council and the police commissioners, each with the same membership, but separate legal identity and powers. Further legislation in 1850 allowed populous places other than existing boroughs to become police boroughs. In 1893, most of the anomalies in the administration of boroughs were removed, police commissioners were retitled as councillors and all boroughs were to consist of a single body corporate, ending the existence of parallel boroughs. All boroughs of barony and regality that had not adopted a police system were abolished. Councils were to be headed by a chief magistrate using the customary title of the borough. In 1900, the chief magistrate of every borough was to be known as the provost, except in boroughs granted a lord provost. The last major legislation to affect boroughs came into effect in 1930. The Local Government Scotland Act 1929 divided boroughs into three classes, counties of cities, the four largest royal boroughs, they combined the powers of a borough and county council. Large boroughs, independent of the county council except in major services such as police and education. Small boroughs, performing minor local government functions such as street cleaning, housing, lighting and drainage. The Local Government Scotland Act 1973 formally abolished boroughs. Section 1 5 of the Act stated, on 16 May 1975, all local government areas existing immediately before that date, that is to say, all counties, counties of cities, large boroughs, small boroughs and districts, shall cease to exist, and the council of every such area shall also cease to exist. The use of the title continues in informal use, however. The common good properties and funds of the royal boroughs continue to exist. They are administered by the present area councils, who must make have regard to the interests of the inhabitants of the area to which the common good formerly related. The use of these assets are to be for the benefit of the inhabitants of the former borough. Any person or body holding the honorary freedom of any place, formerly having the status of a city, borough or royal borough continued to enjoy that status after the 1975 reorganization. Features Provost The chief magistrate or convener of a borough, equivalent to a mayor, was called a provost. Many different titles were in use until the Town Councils Act 1900 standardized the term as provost, except in cities with a lord provost. Since 1975 local authorities have been free to choose the title of their convener and provosts are appointed to chair a number of area and community councils. Baileys Under the provost were magistrates or baileys who both acted as councillors, and in the enforcement of laws. As well as general tasks, they often had specific tasks such as inspecting wine, or ale, or other products sold at market. The title of bailey ceased to have any statutory meaning in 1975, although modern area councils do sometimes make appointments to the office on a purely ceremonial basis. 
For example, Glasgow City Council grants the title in an honorary capacity to senior councillors, while Stirling Council appoints four baileys to act in lieu of the provost in specific geographical areas. Burgesses A resident granted the rights of a «freeman» of the borough, was styled a burgess place burgesses, a title also used in English boroughs. These freemen and their wives were a class which did not include dependents e apprentices and servants, though they were not guaranteed to be wealthy. <laughs> Dean of Guild This was a title held by one of the baileys of the borough who presided over a dean of guild court which was given the specific duty of building control. The courts were abolished in 1975, with building regulation transferred to the relevant local authority. Appointments to the office of dean of guild are still made in some areas, for instance the Lord Dean of Guild of Glasgow is described as the second citizen of Glasgow. After the Lord Provost although the appointment is in the hands of the Merchant's House of Glasgow, and not the City Council. <laughs> Trading privileges Early boroughs were granted the power to trade, which allowed them to control trade until the 19th century. The population of burgesses could be roughly divided between merchants and craftsmen, and the tensions between the interests of the two classes was often a feature of the cities. Craftsmen were usually organized into guilds. Merchants also had a guild, but many merchants did not belong to it, and it would be run by a small group of the most powerful merchants. The class of merchants included all traders, from stall holders and pack men to shop holders and traders of considerable wealth. Topic. Etymology As used in this article, the Scots language word burra is derived from the Old English burr. In Scotland, it refers to corporate entities whose legality is peculiar to Scotland. Scottish law was protected and preserved as distinct from laws of England under the Acts of Union of 1707. Pronunciation is the same as the English language word burrow, which is a near cognate of the Scots word. The identical English word burra in place names such as Bambara, Caraburg and Dunstanburg sounds exactly like the Scots burra, with the emphasis on the r. Another variant pronunciation, listen, is heard in several Cumbrian place names, e.g. burra by Sands, Longburg, Drumburg, Mayburg Henge. The English language burrow, like the Scots burra, is derived from the same Old English language word burr, whose dative singular and nominative, accusative plural form birig sometimes underlies modern place names, and which had dialectal variants including burg. It was also sometimes confused with beer, borg, mound, hill, on which see Hall 2001, 69-70. The Old English word was originally used for a fortified town or proto-castle e.g. at Dover Castle or Burra Castle and was related to the verb beorgen cf. Dutch and German bergen, meaning to keep, save, make secure. In the German language, Berg means castle or fortress, though so many towns grew up around castles that it almost came to mean city, and is incorporated into many place names, such as Hamburg, Flensburg, and Strasbourg. The word has cognates, or near cognates, in other Germanic languages. For example, Berg in German, and Borg in both Danish and Swedish. The equivalent word is also to be found in Frisian, Dutch, Norwegian, and Icelandic. Burra in place names is found in its greatest UK concentration in the East Anglia region of southern England, where also the word has taken the form Barry, as in Canterbury. A number of other European languages have cognate words which were borrowed from the Germanic languages during the Middle Ages, including Brog in Irish, BWR or BWRC, meaning wall, rampart, in Welsh, Borg in French, Borgo in Italian, and Burgo in Spanish, hence the place name Burgos. The most obviously derivative words are burger in English, burger in German or burger in Dutch literally citizen, with connotations of middle class in English and other Germanic languages. Also related are the words bourgeois and belfry both from the French, and burglar. More distantly, it is related to words meaning hill or mountain in a number of languages cf. the second element of iceberg. Linguistics 
Burra is commonly used as a suffix in place names in Great Britain, particularly Scotland and Northern England, and other places where Britain settled. Examples England Examples Scotland Topic Other Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, United States Greenberg, New York, United States Hamptonburg, New York, United States Plattsburgh, New York, United States Newburgh, New York, United States Edinburgh, Indiana, United States Edithburgh, South Australia Lewisburg, County Mayo, Ireland on as a place name on its own, in the West Germanic countries. See also Borough Convention of Royal Boroughs Five Boroughs List of Boroughs in Scotland List of UK place names with royal patronage Royal Borough Notes <laughs>